I'd like to talk about Rule 100 in Section 10 of the Canadian Electrical Code. It's a very small sentence. It just says there shall be no objectionable passage of current over a grounding conductor. Um, in order to do so, it's important to know um, a few things about this and why. So I'd like to talk about the reason, the reasoning behind why there is no objectionable passage of current over a grounding conductor. So the grounding conductor has to be designed and constructed so that it is permanent and continuous. We have to make sure it has a rating that can carry any current likely to be imposed on it. We have to ensure that it limits the voltage rise above the ground or that ground potential rise on any exposed metal carrying fault currents. And it has to allow overcurrent devices to operate in their designated time to clear fault of negligible impedance. That would be a short circuit or ground fault. Any current that is caused by the failure of a system should flow through here only in a brief period of time. So it is not made to hold that current forever or ever, just if it has to in a very brief period of time. And it holds that to minimize that shock and fire hazard, that equipment damage, the electrical disturbances, the propagation of faults. There has to be no, and the words chosen here are no objectionable passage of current during normal operation. If current were to flow in that system during normal operation, there would be voltage differences be between the points in the systems. And those are called ground loops. So you have to design this system so that your grounding conductors don't cause ground loops. Um, and Bonding helps us minimize those ground loops. Those ground loops can result in, in individual shock hazards, electrical disturbances, overheating of the grounding conductors. Through the use of multiple grounds in a system, you, you, might, um, you might actually get, make an unbalanced neutral return current through the grounding conductor. So, um, that's objectionable because again, no objectionable passage of current can, can move over a grounding conductor. Um, that objectionable current flow can also happen in the grounding conductor when it's adjacent or when, sorry, yeah, when it's, when it's adjacent to another ground, too close to that other ground. And in other rules about the grounding uh, electrodes, it talks about how far away they should be. They should be two meters away because of this. Uh, accidental loosening or disconnection of the neutral conductor can occur at a grounded main surface and uh, main service, and that's going to also cause some interruption. Um, in in this um, or or would cause some objectionable objectionable current flow that you're not allowed to have according to rule 100. Those neutral currents that flow in grounding conductors are considered objectionable and corrective action has to happen right away. If you do find an objectionable passage of current in a ground conductor, then one or more of the grounds in the neutral conductor should be removed. Or the location of those grounding connections has to be um, considered and uh, moved. Um, or the continuity of the grounding conductor between grounding connections should be interrupted. The only currents that are not objectionable are those that occur under normal operations, such as a temporary current resulting from a ground fault or the induced current from adjacent single conductors. So this is just one line of the code, but there's a lot of reasoning behind it. That's the reasoning behind um, rule 100.